Hello guys, in this video we will see Linux basic commands. Those are commonly used in day to day activities in Linux environment. First connect to Linux machine. See, I am in Red Hat. The commands which I am going to execute are the same in all Linux distributions like Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, Fedora, Manjaro, R, Rocky Linux, Garuda and Mac as well. First, first open terminal by clicking on activities then click on terminal. First command that we are going to see is who am I? See, I am administrator. So this user we have connected. Next command is PWD. PWD means present working directory. What it will give? It will give the current directory that we are working on. See, we are in home administrator. Every user have their own directory like in windows we have profile next command is we have to check list of the files and folders in this home administrator directory give ls ls means listing it will simply give the all the files see these are the files are there in current directory if you want to see detailed output like creation date, owner and the permissions on the folder. Okay, see, administrator is the owner for this file or this directory. It's created on 6th June. This is the group name. These are the permissions details. If anything contains D means direct. If there is no D means it is file. See, this is the file and this is the file. Okay, and this is the file size. These are, these are all sizes of the file. Next command, if you want to see the hidden files, we have to give ls hyphen a. We missed it hyphen ls then hyphen a. See, before we got only these 12 files, but see here, we have more than 12. To clear screen, we have to press control and press l from your keyboard or simply use the command clear use control l when i type control l the screen just moved up but we are able to see the previous executed commands but if we run clear this will be gone see if i press enter see we are unable to scroll up see here we don't have the previous commands in the screen next command is if we want to find out the ip of this machine by simply run the ifconfig. See, this is the IP address. In Windows, we used to run the command ipconfig. But in Linux, it won't work. If ipconfig, see, command not found. So, we have to use ifconfig. Okay. Next command is, suppose if you want to see a website or any server is online or not, simply give the ping google.com. See, we got some packets. Control C to cancel this process. See, received 12 packets, 12 packets transmitted and 12 packets received. See, we can find the IP of this Google website. Copy this one, ping, then paste that IP. See, we are able to ping. So, which means the host is online. Suppose if we go ping 192.168.1.7. See, we are not receiving any data, which means the machine with this IP is offline or not available. Control C to cancel this process. See, 12 packets sent and received are 0. Clear screen by pressing Control L. Next command is we have to create directories. In Windows, 
what we will do simply we will open the in windows what we will do simply we will open then we will go to a directory c assume then we will simply right click and select create new folder we will give the name of the directory or folder in windows we call it as direct folder but in linux we call it as directory to create a directory we use mkdir is the command to create a directory mkdir then linux basics to verify we have to give ls c the directory has been created if you want to read more human readable format you ls hyphen ltrh see we have created just now we can verify the current date by using date see it has created just now okay if we want to create multiple directories just give mkdir then dir one directory two directory three directory four like this we can give n number of directory names press enter if this won't work then we have to give sudo but it will work because i am in my current directory press enter let's verify see directories with the name dir1 dir2 dir3 dir4 has been created successfully clear screen by pressing ctrl l from your keyboard next command is but if we want to go to this particular directory then then we have to use cd command cd just type first letter then press tab so it automatically fills the directory name press enter we have switched to linux basics let's verify the current directory see we are in home administrator linux basics now create two more directories in this directory mkdir abc xyz ls now if see we have created xyz but if we want to rename it to my backup we can do by running the command mv then xyz then we have to give new directory name my backups let's verify see we have successfully renamed a directory the command mv next command is touch touch is the command used to create empty files not the directories touch test1 dot txt test apc dot sh xyz dot sql mno dot text like this so with this command what it will do it just creates empty files it doesn't contain any information press enter type ls see we have created ls hyphen ldrh see we have created these four files now next command is cd cd means change directory if we give cd then directory name here it is abc so we will switch from current directory to abc see now we are in this home administrator then linux basics and abc directory we just went one up directory again i am going to abc directory if we want to go up two directories then we have to give cd dot dot forward slash then dot dot what it will do we will go up two more directories see we are in home administrator we are jumped from directly from this directory to this home administrator directory until now what we have done we have changed directory first linux then cd abc so we have run the two commands to reach this this directory but we can do that by running the command see now we are in home directory 
we can directly jump from this directory to abc simply give cd then administrator then linux basics then abc so we are simply going forward three more directories see we simply jump to three more directories see present working directories linux home administrator linux basics and abc clear screen by control l if you want to see the directories in abc give ls which means empty so there are no files and directories i am going one more directory up now now we are going to see cat command what it will do it will create a file it combines two file two or more files and create single file also cat is used to view the data of a file now we are going to see the contents of this test one dot txt it doesn't contain any information i am going to add some data to this test one dot file now we can find the data in the test one dot txt see it contains this much data so we are able to view the contents of a file using cat command also we can create new file by using cat command mirror dot txt see cursor is not released so we have to enter some data welcome to r2 schools website linux is more secure os than any other os then we have to save this file by pressing control d the data got saved in mirror.txt let's verify simply give cat then mirror.txt see we have saved this data ls hyphen ltrh see the last two files are having some data if we want to combine these two files we have to run the command cat then file names test1.txt and mirror then give the new file name combined dot txt ls hyphen ldr see new file has been created and its size also got increased let's verify contents of this file cat combined see last two lines see up to here this is the test one dot txt file information and this is the mirror dot txt so we have combined by using this command what yeah this come with cat then file names not only with the two files we can use a number of files then we have given greater than and created a new file with the name command.txt control c then control l next command mv mv is used to rename a file or move the file from one directory to another directory first we will see how to rename a file by using mv see here we have the file abc.sh we can rename the file using mv then the source file here source file is abc.sh then new file i am giving new abc.sh once we enter this command this file will be replaced with this file the content of this file will be remain same we are just renaming see abc.sh gone and new file has been created but the content is same if we want to move this mno.txt to my backups simply we can use mv then mno.txt to destination here this is the source file and this is the destination then we have to give 
then we have to give my underscore backup once we enter this file will be gone from this current directory that is this linux press enter see that file is gone from this current directory let's verify cd then we have to go to this directory and my underscore back backups see the file is here not only files we can move directories as well suppose if you want to move this my underscore backups to this abc directory simply give my simply give mv or move both are same sources my underscore backups to abc done let's verify see this my underscore backups directory gone let's verify let's go to this abc directory by using cd cd means change directory abc ls c directory has been moved successfully to abc i'm going two more directories up pwd present working directory i am going to linux basics clear screen ls next command is cp cp or copy what it will do it will copy files from one directory files or directories from one directory to another directory suppose if i want to copy this new dot new abc dot sh and test one dot txt to this abc directory or let's create another directory suppose if you want to copy this new abc dot sh and test one dot txt to this scripts directory we use cp new abc dot sh then test one dot txt so what it will do it will keep these two files in this directory and it will it will keep copy of these two to these two in this scripts directory then we have to give the destination see files remains there but copy of this files are there in this scripts directory let's go to cd scripts directory ls see two files are there ls hyphen ltrl you can also copy the directories as well cp scripts here in scripts directory go to one more directory ls now i am going to copy this scripts directory to this abc cp sources scripts to abc see it's not empty so we have to give hyphen r it is success I R means recursive. See, scripts remains there, but if we go to A B C, see, we have copied scripts directory here as well. So, what is the difference between copy and move? Is copy simply copies the file by keeping original at same place. Move is like cut command. Copy is like copy paste in Windows. and move is like cut command next command is move and cut see i have these many files i am going to create few more See, I have some more files. It's a very careful and very dangerous command in Linux or Unix operating systems is RM. Once we remove, we can't get it. Suppose if I type RM, then if I give test one dot txt, it will be gone. We can't restore it again. See, that file has gone. We can remove 
more files not only single file we can remove ab a a a dot sh bb dot sh abc dot text all files gone next command is rm dir means remove directory to remove a directory we have to use rm dir then use the directory name c we are unable to remove a directory because it's not empty so which means we can only remove empty directory by using rm dir let's create empty directory mkdir backups see it is empty directory we can simply use rm dir to remove directory see it's gone see it doesn't exist so if you want to remove non empty directories then we have to use rm then hyphen caps r then we have to give directory name it's gone let's verify see script directory gone see, next command is ch1 means change owner we have these files and directories this is the first column this is the second column third column third column is the owner name of the files and directories now i am going to change owner of this new abc.sh file by using ch1 then username postgres then new abc see permission operation not permitted because you don't have the sudo privileges see we have successfully changed i will explain you about sudo later ls ls hyphen ltr see one name has been changed to postgres before it was administrator so this is the purpose of ch1 that is change owner to change the ownership of a file or directory you can change directory as well now i am going to explain more about ls command that is listing ls simply it give the files ls hyphen a it will give the hidden files as well ls hyphen ltr h it will give the files with order with the time and human readable format suppose if you want to get only txt files we have to give star the file sends with txt see we got only these two files if you want to get only the files starts with a then we have to give a then star ls hyphen by star c there is only file only one file with the starting of three characters by if you give only ls hyphen l it it is not in the sorted order so if you give ltr then we will get if you give ls hyphen lr sorry we have to give hyphen ls hyphen lr see we got files first and directory last if you give ls hyphen ltr see it is filtered based on the creation date until now we have seen how to create files and folders and how to modify them now we are going to see how to view file contents by using more less tail head and vim or vi and nano vim or vi and nano are the editors suppose if you want to view contents of this command dot txt file we have seen cat is the command command see once we enter this one it will go to last line of the file see see here we have to scroll up like this but if line if file contains 10000s of the lines are one lakh rows then it will be very difficult to scroll up like this so for that purpose we have two commands more or less clear screen ls more then give the file name press enter see 
it loaded only 34%. See, whatever the screen fits, that much only it loads. If you want to go for next line, we have to press space bar on your keyboard. If you want to go back, just give B. And for then B, C, we are in second page. If you want to go back, then we have to use back. That is, we have to press B on your keyboard. If you want to go forward, we have to use space. Then, if you want to fit from this file, we have to press Q from your keyboard. If you want to filter, use more, then file name combined, then pipe symbol grep. Grep is the command to filter the based on the expression. Print C. These two lines contain print. If you want to see R2 schools, just give R2 schools. So it will print only match lines. See, that file contains only one line with R2 school. Next command is head or tail. Head means we can use the first lines of the file. Tail means we can use the last 10 lines of the file. First head, then file name. See, we are able to see only first 10 lines. If we want to view first 20 lines, we have to give head hyphen 20, then file name. See, we are able to see first 20 lines. Next one is tail. Tail, then file name. See, we are able to see only the last 10 lines. Tail hyphen, if we want to view bottom 20 lines of the file, we have to give tail, then minus 20 or hyphen 20, then file name. See, these are last 20 lines of a file. So, tail is used to see the bottom lines of a file or the last lines of a file. And head is used to first lines or to the top rows of a file. Next one is VAR nano. With the VAR nano, we can create or modify a file or file content. First VI. Or VIM. Both are same. See, we have total. See, we have total five files and one directory. Let's create a file using VI. First script dot sh. Then we have to press I. Means insert. If a file is in like insert in mode, then only we can enter the data. Then type If you want to save, we have to press escape from your keyboard. Then colon W Q then exclamation. What it will do? It will write or it will save and quit. See, see, new file created. That is past script dot sh. A cat past okay script dot sh. See, we are able to see. With VA, we can edit as well. First script. Suppose if you want to create first line, use press DD from your keyboard. See, first line now. Suppose if you want to remove only S, yes, then keep the cursor. See, it's a blinking right. So, just press X from your keyboard. One letter gone. If you want to remove one more W letter, just give x suppose if you want to remove entire line just give dd see the last line now if you press q1 enter so nothing will be changed q and exclamation so then nothing will be changed file remains will be changed if you give w q and exclamation changes will be affected first we will try with q exclamation then view the same file again. See, data remains same. So, dd to remove the current line. x means remove the blinking letter from a file. 
see empty space is there so we have to press d again d the line gone so we have edited if we want to save we have to give wq exclamation press enter now view the file again cat first see before the file contains five lines after v editor we have removed two lines okay so purpose of v is creating or modifying the content of a file we will make a separate video for a editor next command is nano nano second script dot sh now type whatever you want Now press Ctrl X to exit. Now it is asking to save or not. Press Y. Then Ctrl C. Ctrl X, Ctrl Y. Then press Enter. It's done. See, second file created. View the contents. Second, see, content is there. So this is the use of nano command. Next is history. If you want to see the list of the commands executed, just give history. See, until now, until now I ran this 492 commands by using this administrator account. Suppose if you switch to root, you can't find that many. Run the history. See, history count is different. So, what it means? History shows only for the current user executed commands, not other users executed commands. Control it to clear screen. See, suppose if, you are, if I want to run this 380 one line again, no need to run that command. It is simple, but I am showing how to run that particular just give exclamation exclamation and type the line number 378 sorry 378 is cd up up but 379 again it will change because we have run one more right history see i want to run this is 376 line number it is simple command but if the command contains two or three lines then it is always better to run i forgot that one 376 see it executed the command pwd clear skin type controller see whatever the commands we executed i remembered and i am telling but if you want to know more about the commands just give man that is manual or give hyphen hyphen l it will give the purpose of the command and the options used along with that command suppose man cat it will give the first definition cat is the concatenate of files and prints on the standard output and these are the options See, until now, these are the options. Just give cat help. See, it, we got less output than the manual, man command. So, like this, if you want to get man of grep command. Grep such as, grep such as patterns in each file. Pattern is one of one or more patterns separated by new line characters and grab prints each line that matches a pattern if you want to quit from this one just press q now we are going to see user management in user management we are going to show you how to add user modify user set the password for user 
remove user or delete user sudo and change commands to add a user we have to use add user or user add commands i'm going to add user james it will throw error see because user is already exists let's see whether that particular user is there or not by running more slash etc pass wd then grep then username james see user is there with group and id with id and group this is the home directory for that user this is the bash shell now add another user add user david it will also throw an error but this time it is different the above is the warning permission in it so why because you can add a user by using root or sudo privileged user but in my case administrator doesn't have the root privileges so we have to use sudo then add user david it is success because we haven't received any error let's verify more slash etc pass wd then pipe symbol and grep david see user david has been created this is id of the this david and this is the group id and this is the home directory for this david user and this is the bash shell bash shell path we can also verify id david see we got the same output of the user see clearly clearly it is saying this is the user id this is the group id and this is also same group we can also view all list of the users simply by running more slash etc pass wd first these are all no login no login these are all system logins we can see at the end see these two are the users we have created we have created a user but we haven't set the password control l to clear the screen to set next command is pass wd it is used to set password or log the user if you don't know more if you want to see more about this one you have to use pass wd it, it will give you the manual of this pod pass wd command it authenticates user tokens okay see hyphen l means it locks hyphen u means it will unlock hyphen d means it will delete so what it will delete it will delete the password for an account s means we will get the status of the password these are other options you can go through each option and try so now i am going to set password for user james as i have told we have to give sudo sudo is the command used to run any application or command with admin privileges sudo pass wd then we have to provide the username here username is james r david enter see we have to provide password it is saying bad password but i haven't given the strong password so you in your case give the strong password type the same password again see all authentication tokens updated successfully in the same way sudo pass wd david update the password for the user david see it doesn't match so we have to run again pass wd all authentication tokens updated successfully next command is user mod user mod means user modification man user mod it see the definition here modify a user account these are the options append then group id group name lock the group move home 
we have different options unlock so go through each option and practice first i am going to create group by using sudo group add i am giving group name as backup users now i am going to add james user to this group by using sudo user mod hyphen a hyphen g then group name backup user then give the username james it is success let's verify id james see user is added to two groups james and backup backup user the same is check david but david is added to only one group if we want add this david also david to backup user group then use the same command sudo user mod hyphen a hyphen g then group name david it is success let's verify again id david see before user is part of only david group now we have added user to backup user group as well next command is chase chase is a command used to modify password expiry information first find the james user password expiry information here also we have to use this sudo see the last password changed is today password expires never password password inactive also never account expires never minimum number of days between password change is 0 to 99000 and 999 okay days number of days warning before expire is 7 we can change all these settings by using this chase command suppose if you want to change the warning days from 7 to 5 days just give sudo chase hyphen w 5 then username it's a caps so we have to change it is success let's verify again sudo chase hyphen l then username see warning days number of days of warning before password expire is 5 days here it was 7 you want to change it to 10 you remove this one replace 5 with 10 again verify see the number has been increased to 10 before it was 5 next we will see the dnf or apt or duplicate or update commands dnf or apt are used to update the packages or to install the packages or to search the packages apt is used only in debian systems like ubuntu debian kali linux or other oss and other oss dnf or m commands are interchangeably same latest versions we have to use dnf in red hat family like red hat centos fedora oracle linux and other oss so this is red hat so i have to use sudo dnf or m both are same update what this will do it will update the packages if you are in ubuntu or debian or kali linux you have to use sudo apt get update if you want to install a package sudo dnf or m install i am going to install python see it is going to this is the way to install a package i am cancelling this one because i have already python simply type python see i am in python shell 
okay clear screen by pressing control l next command is w get this is the command used to download a file from the url sudo w get then url of the file by running that command it will download let me give you an example if you want to download a file from google.com assume there is a file like readme.txt so we are going to download this file from this website but i am giving the syntax but i am not sure whether this google.com contains this file or not see doesn't contains if file is there then we just we have to give duplicate then website name see i have connected to this machine using putty with james user okay so ps is the command to check the processes running at present ps hyphen yep see see we have these many processes running at present see james administrator see administrator has executed this command suppose if you want to check whether a particular process is running or not by running the command ps hyphen grep assume postgres is the database name whether it's running or not see it is running if it is not running just we will get this command this output this line also we can verify ps hyphen ef grep docker see docker service is running with the user root here this postgres or postmaster is running with the user postgres like this we can find the list of the processes running also notice here this is the process id or we can call it as pid next command is kill if i want to kill this james user suppose if i want to kill this session which i logged in with james first verify the process of the james see this is the process so this is the process id let me kill it kill then process id 4487 we have to use sudo let's see select remote side unexpectedly closed the connection also see the putty is inactive we run again let again verify here see there are no process ids for this james user if you reconnect again then we will see we have connected again run the same command see process new process id or pid has been generated so we have seen ps and kill commands next command is top it will give the top cpu consuming pids information see cpu percentage and memory percentage and what the what those are doing see these are all system commands we are not doing anything see for every 5 seconds it is changing here tasks here you can see more information like swap memory and memory components if you want to quit from this one just press q other command is there that is h stop it has to throw error because i have not installed we have to next command is jobs jobs are nothing but if there are any jobs running it will display next is cron tab cron tab is nothing but the schedule task see there are no cron jobs there are cron jobs it will list here next is df see it has it has shown file system space information this is the one file system this is the total file system size and this is user and this is available 
space and this is usage in percentage du it will give entire file usage is information we can filter this du output as well next command is who am i i think i have already covered this command it will show you the current logged in user i have logged in with administrator here also we can verify who am i here i logged in with the user james see here username first one is the username and second one is the host name if we are not sure about the host name just give the host name see it has displayed the host name of the this virtual machine or this machine if you want to check the date just give the date this is the today's date if we want to find the this machine uptime which means started since how long just give the uptime see up by 54 minutes and this is the current time total users are two this is the load average information if we want to see the list of the reboot or start times just give last reboot see these are all the system start times or reboot times if we want to shut down we have to give shutdown command if you give hyphen if you give simply shutdown it will shut down after one minute if you want to restart shut down then hyphen r it will restart after one minute if you want to cancel this one just give shut down hyphen c as a junior or a level one administrator be careful before performing this shutdown r rm r rm directory commands those are very difficult we can't retrieve file if we remove or shut down also it is very dangerous be careful if you are not sure take your seniors suggestion before performing this remove rm r shutdown commands before performing remove command it is always better to keep backup of your file so in this video we have seen around 50 linux basic commands for more videos please subscribe for more linux videos please subscribe my channel thank you